Hello and welcome to our channel, Tech Expert Tutorials. In today's video, we will show you how to create an Azure Cloud SQL Server database and connect to it from your desktop using SSMS. We will also cover some key configuration and connecting to the database service using the Azure console. First, we open Azure at portal.azure.com and search for the SQL Server service. Select Azure SQL from the list. We have three options here. The first is used for storing data in a new database. The others are more for moving data from an on-premise database to the cloud. SQL Manage Instances is a service as an instance, meaning that there is very little setup required from you. SQL Virtual Machines are IaaS, meaning you will need to maintain everything on that server, including the OS. However, this option will give you the most flexibility. We will select the first instance as we are not moving data to the server. We will be creating new data sets. This is a platform as a service, meaning very little setup for you. On the screen, you can see an option to try a free version of Azure SQL Server. This is useful if you are developing or experimenting. If you are looking for a production level server, you would skip this offer. This is a demo, so we will only need a minimal server. So we hit the free server apply offer button. The database will run serverless, meaning there is no dedicated hardware for the service. It will spin up an environment every time something happens in the database, such as a new connection, query backup, or some other process. We will compare pricing on the different options in a few minutes. For this option, we get 32 gigs of storage and backup and some virtual cores with a minimal usage of 100k vCore seconds. As an example, you can run queries on 16 vCores for 6,000 seconds. This is calculated in processing time, not clock time. A warning, you will want to disconnect from the database when you're not using it, as the serverless process will continue running until a set amount of time after all connections are closed. For example, if you connect to your Azure database using SSMS or connect via some other application, you will burn up your vCore seconds quota while the application is connected or running. Also, there is a DTU option that has more predictable cost footprint. Since we selected the free option, we only have access to the vCore model pricing. If you change your mind, you can hit the Remove Offer button and set up a paid server instance instead. Click on the Learn More link to get more info on the free version. After making a few selections on the previous screen, you will see a cost summary card, like this one, summarizing your estimated costs for the options that you select. If you selected free, you should see a lot of zeros. Here are some more details on the free limits and prerequisites. There is a limit of one per subscription. One important item to cover is how to handle the case where you use up your free subscription before the end of the month. You can choose to pause the subscription to avoid any costs, or you can choose to keep the database running, which will start incurring costs for your database. You will also find detailed instructions on how to set all of this up. If you change your mind, you can hit the Remove Offer button and set up a paid server instance instead. Scroll down and select the subscription and select or create a new resource group. Fill in the database name and server. You will need to create a new server if you haven't created one before. In the Create SQL Database Server window, fill out the server name. This will be used when connecting to the database from an external application. We will show you how to connect using SSMS on your desktop later. Select a location. We suggest using the same location as the one that the resource group uses. We will use SQL authentication to simplify our connections and to allow programmatical access to the server. Fill out a login and password for your admin account. Then click OK to go back to the previous screen. You can see the compute and storage settings here. We selected free, so we don't have any options. Here we select the option on whether to turn off the free database or let it continue running after you use up the free credits for the current month. Continue means you will start to incur charges for the rest of the month. Click on the networking button. At this point, you should see the cost summary card. It will stay visible until you are finished making your selections. This is helpful for estimating or controlling your monthly costs. This is just an estimate. Your cost may vary from this amount. 
depending on your load, data size, and other variables. So far, we see zeros here. Before we continue, we are going to show you the costs if you didn't select the free offer. Go back and remove the offer. The estimated cost should change now. We also have a few more options. You can select your environment as development or production. Changing to production incurs a much larger cost, and estimate shows this. With our settings, the cost would be around $300 per month. We see hyperscale for the compute and storage. This is more powerful and therefore more expensive. You can click the configure database to get more options. If you change from the default settings, the cost will usually go up. You can select locally redundant or geo redundant. This affects where your backup storage is located. In this case, the cost is the same. Normally, the locally redundant option is less expensive as it is slightly less reliable. Now, we will go back and reset the apply free offer and continue from before. The estimate should go back to zero and our settings were saved from before. We changed the connectivity to a public endpoint so we can access the server from an external application. Later in this video, we will show you how to connect to this Azure database from an SSMS application running on your desktop. You would use a private endpoint if you only need to access this from another Azure service running on the same virtual network. We want to turn on access for Azure services and for our client IP address. The second one will be necessary for our SSMS connection testing later. We will use the default connection policy to simplify this demo. This option will be able to handle both types of communication, internal and external. TLS 1.2 is fine. We leave this as is. Click on security to continue. We won't turn on Defender or the Ledger for this demo. The same goes for server identity and level keys or additional encryption. These options are useful for improving security in production level services. Now go to additional settings. We will load a sample data set from AdventureWorks. We will use this for demo purposes later in the video. Click OK. Click on Tags. Tags are helpful for cloud service management. You can use these values for searching or filtering your services. Now, we will review our selections and create the service. At the bottom, there is an option to download a template. You would use this to recreate the service later with the settings you selected so far. Everything looks fine, so we click on Create. First, the process will validate your settings. Then the deployment starts. You will see a screen showing the status of the deployment. This can take a few minutes depending on your selections. There is a list of dependent resources that are being created with a status for each. When it is finished, you will see a deployment is complete banner. Click on go to resource. This will bring you to the screen with metadata or details about your new database. Here you can see the amount of free vCore seconds that you have remaining. You can click on the resource group to view all the services that were created so far. The storage account was created earlier. The other two are from this demo. Click on the server to see the settings for this service. Go to the settings on the left and click on SQL databases. You will see your database that is running on this cloud-based server. Status is online and it shows the pricing tier is free. Click on the database here that brings you back to the previous screen. Copy the server name using the copy icon and save this to use later. Now open Microsoft SSMS and copy the server name to the login screen. We are using SQL Server Authentication. Type in the SQL Server login and password, then click Connect. The connection should show up in the Object Explorer flame on the left. If this does not work, check your database for a public endpoint and your IP settings. Looks like this worked. We will open the database and tables to verify we have full access from SSMS. Click the database name, then click on Tables. We can see several tables listed here. Select one, then right click and select Top 1000 Rows. This opens a query window and shows the SQL that we are running, along with the results below. So we do have select access to the database. If you want to check or change your compute or storage settings, click on Compute plus Storage. We selected Free and Auto Pause, shown here. Scroll down to see how many vCores and database size that we have configured. 
you can also see some monitoring statistics. If you don't have SSMS installed, you can query the database from Azure. Click on Query Editor and log in with the same admin credentials. Now expand the Tables folder. Go to one of the tables, click on the ellipses, and select Top 1000 Rows here. You can also edit your data here or rename columns. Click Run and you will see the results below. Click on the Maintenance item on the left. This is where you would schedule a time frame for maintenance jobs and create health alerts. You can also view some properties here. You can set up monitoring rules under the monitoring slash alerts item on the left. There are many metrics you can view, one at a time. Select a different metric and aggregation type. For example, CPU used with an aggregation of average. You can also add multiple metrics to the same chart here. For example, show the free amount consumed with a max aggregation. If you want, you can set up diagnostics for troubleshooting and debugging. Here is a list that is available, including tuning, query stats, errors, timeouts, etc. Log Analytics is a tool for viewing your Azure Monitor logs. It will query your log files and extract out or analyze what you are searching for. Automation tasks are for scheduling a task or setting up an automated response based on a trigger. If you update your service, you can extract a current template to recreate your environment with your changes. Format is JSON and used in deployments based on ARM, or Azure Resource Manager. There are other options available for deploying a resource programmatically, such as PowerShell or Python scripts and Azure Shell command line scripts, along with using this portal console. In this example, you can change the name of your resources and set up input parameters or variables. To wrap up, in this video we cover the basics on setting up an SQL server on the Azure Cloud, including the main options available, along with how to connect using SSMS and the Azure Console. Well, that's all we have for today. Stay tuned for more videos on advanced topics with Azure services. As always, comments and suggestions are welcome. Please like and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.